Now, to start off the implementation, I've created a very simple table in MySQL. It's uh, based on an ID uh, that will auto-increment a uh, time that's default to the sys time and uh, search criteria, which is what I enter into PubMed, and the number of search results that are returned from that search. So these are a set of testing data that I've retrieved uh, after I've run the program. Once I got that simple table set up, I'm going to go ahead and start building my application. I'm going to choose the custom application as the template. We'll call this PubMed. Com.adf homebrew. PubMed. And I'm going to save the uh, library additions for a later step. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up. And now I'm going to project properties, libraries, and I'm going to add um, a couple of necessary libraries. So the first thing here is I'm going to add the JSOUP 1.7 library. And I'm also going to add the MySQL driver. And finally, um, I'm going to add the top link library. Now I'm going to build the entity object. I'm going to select new from gallery and I'm going to choose entities from table. Keep these default. I'm going to import my existing connection and I'm going to select the table of interest and I'm going to specify the entity package. I don't need to query this so I don't have to check this generate at name query annotation and I believe everything else is default okay now I have my entity object created just going to clean up um, a couple of these attributes which I don't need uh, the scrape time is being defaulted in the database uh, to the current timestamp um, so I don't need that the ID is being auto incremented uh, so I don't need that um, and also in the persistence uh, XML um, many of these attributes are generated um, to be recognizable within a Java E container um, as I am running this um, project directly in, outside the container I don't need this uh, additional definition so I'm going to just clean that up a bit Next, we're going to create a very simple um, Java class to handle our database interaction. I'm going to call this persistence util. And I'm going to paste some code in here. Um, and I'll give you a brief explanation of what this uh, code will do. So I have two methods in here. Um, this method down here, get outside container EM, if you look at the documentation, um, on the uh, eclipse.org you'll find out that this is how you can get um, get the uh, persistence to work outside a container. Essentially what you just do is create a map, give it the uh, JDBC URL, username, password, and then create this entity manager factory um, from that properties map. And then the other method it just takes in a list of um, entity objects um, targeted for persistence and uh, use this entity manager to um, create the transaction and um, persist the targeted entity objects. Okay, before I create our uh, final class uh, for the client, I just want to explain how this works. Uh, so if I go to PubMed and type in um, Rocka1, um, what you'll notice is that on the URL, there is a get attribute um, that's appended uh, called term uh, and then it's equal to BRCA1. Um, so this is essentially going to be the request that I need to construct um, programmatically and let JSUP retrieve the response. And once I have the response, um, Google Chrome has this inspect element option which will allow me to look at the HTML um, which I intend to parse. And you can see that if you're familiar with jQuery, um, what I'm trying to get is this results 1 to 20 of 10, 792. Uh, I need to create something called a selector and the selector here is going to be just the h2 tag with this class result count um, as the uh, value. 
So if we go back and start creating this, uh, we're going to create a new Java class and we're going to call this PubMed search client. Uh, once again, I'm going to paste some code in here and explain to you how this works. Okay. Um, here we go. Okay, so you'll notice that the, oops, let me get my entity object in there. Okay, so these are the two strings I've defined. Here is the selector, which I was uh, talking about before, and then also this is the um, request URL, which, I be, which I'll be uh, calling the JSOUP API to get the response from. Uh, so the first method we're gonna look at is just this add results. You can see that a document is constructed by calling connect uh, on the JSOUP API, and I give it this uh, search term um, with uh, this BRCA1 criteria um, and then I do a get on that. Uh, once I get the response back um, I do a select using this selector uh, I've defined up here and um, what that will return me is this uh, text here, this results 1 to 20, 10, 792 and uh, then I just perform a simple regular expression replacement on the string to get the actual integer result value. Once I have that, um, I add this to a list. Uh, first, I create the actual entity object specifying the criteria here, which is BRCA1, and then the actual return result after I parse it. Um, and then once that um, is uh, added to the list, um, then I just call the persist method, which I uh, implemented before in the persistence util class. At this point, we can go ahead and run this class, um, and you'll see that if I open up my SQL Workbench and I perform a query, um, this is uh, now working properly. I can run this uh, using another term. I can say P53, run it again. And if I query for now, it should be two records, right? P53 with that information. Okay, now we're going to um, set up deployment. Um, the way to do this is that you can go to deploy on your project and you can say create a new deployment profile, uh, select JAR as the option, and um, you can say PubMed um, as the name of the JAR. And um, that's it. So now if you do deploy, um, you'll have an option for uh, PubMed.jar. That's the one I created before. Um, but this is the one that well, we're gonna be using for the actual jar deployment. So if you finish, you see this is where it outputs the uh, jar file. Um, and before we upload to the um, server to set up the cron job, um, I do want to um, bring up that the um, one of the things that you'll need to do is um, extract uh, the Eclipse link and the JavaX persistence.jar. Um, so I'm going to put this on my blog so you see where to actually extract these two jar files from JDeveloper. Um, so these are going to be the four jar files that we're going to need to upload to the um, application server. Okay, I used uh, FileZilla to transfer um, all the uh, jar files onto my remote server. So that's the pubmed.jar file, and I've got a lib folder. Um, and the lib folder contains the four jar files I'll need uh, to run this um, as a cron task. Um, so to run it, you just need to uh, type in cron tab dash E, which will bring up VI. You can see that I've already got a task set up. So this is going to run every minute. Um, and I could go ahead and um, enable this. Uh, again, I'll publish the actual command uh, on my blog. So you could refer to that later on. Okay, so it's gonna say installing cron, new cron tab, and also you can to cron tab L to see the uh, list of jobs that you've got um, scheduled. So I'm gonna run this for a little bit and then we're gonna query the database to see if um, it actually worked. 
Okay, you can see that I started the uh, cron task around um, 3.02 UTC time and I've got that running for a couple of minutes now. Um, so I can go ahead, go to my SQL Workbench, connect to the remote database, and if I do a query against this table now, um, yeah, you can see that um, it is indeed kicking off at about every minute and I've got a couple of these um, records already inserted into the database. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can find more examples and the source code to uh, this uh, tutorial on my website, uh, westfang.wordpress.com. Thanks.